Good evening. It says something about the kind of week we've seen, or month, or year, or three for that matter, that the big question tonight is, who are you going to believe? Someone not known for telling the truth, or someone on record having made more than 3,000 false or misleading statements since becoming president. It says even more, perhaps, that this entire deeply offensive notion also seems to be the president's entire defensive strategy tonight. As CNN was first to report, sources tell us that Michael Cohen is prepared to tell Russia special counsel Robert Mueller that candidate Trump had advanced knowledge of the now infamous June 2016 meeting between his son, his son-in-law, and campaign chairman and Russians promising Kremlin intelligence on Hillary Clinton. In short, if Mr. Cohen is to be believed, everything that the candidate and later president, his son, the president's lawyers and spokespeople have been saying ever since has been false. And the defense, that's pretty rich. It boils down to this. Don't believe him. He's a liar. Pot, meat, kettle. I did not know of the meeting with my son, Don Jr., the president tweeted this morning. Sounds to me like someone is trying to make up stories in order to get himself out of an unrelated jam. Taxi cabs, maybe? He even retained Bill and Crooked Hillary's lawyer. Gee, I wonder if they helped him make the choice. <clears throat> no further reaction on his, on, uh, on his way to another weekend at the golf course, but the forecast is for rain, so look, there may be more tweeting this weekend. Also, no reaction from Don Jr. seen here today in what must have been a somewhat awkward moment waiting close behind a seated Robert Mueller to board the same flight at Reagan National Airport in Washington. The two did not speak, making it the one meeting we absolutely positively know all there is to know about. No need to take anyone's word on that, especially not, say, Michael Cohen's. Here's the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, talking to CNN's Chris Cuomo about the president's former confidant. I expected something like this from Cohen. He's been lying all week. I mean, or, or for two, he's been lying for years. Lying for years, he says, which is strange because that means Michael Cohen must have been no less a liar when Rudy Giuliani was praising him for not being a liar. So was Mr. Giuliani lying in that clip you just heard or lying in this one from just a couple months ago? The man is an honest, honorable lawyer. It all becomes clear right now. It's confusing, to say the least. The honest, honorable lawyer has also been deeply dishonest for years, or at least this week. Maybe it's like truthful hyperbole or something, or maybe, like so much else these days, it's yet another thing that would be funny if it weren't so serious. After all, this assertion by Michael Cohen, if true, casts serious doubt on the president's longtime claims of no collusion with Russia. If true, what else would, be, would this be except the candidate having knowledge of or complicity in a form of premeditated collaboration or attempted collaboration with a hostile foreign power in the middle of its attack on American democracy. Now, you'll remember the meeting was in June of 2016, but we didn't learn about it till the following summer. The campaign never spoke of it, nor the participants, nor the transition team, nor later the White House or the president. No one said anything until the New York Times broke the story last July. And when people did talk, the first response was to be misleading about what was discussed and to loudly make the claim that be, that's being disputed tonight that the president knew nothing about it before, after, and even a year after the fact. Did do you tell your father anything about this? No. Uh, it was such a nothing. There was nothing to tell. Look, here, here's what happened. Donald Trump Jr. put it all out today. It's all out. There. After. Did you know at the time that they had the meeting? No, I didn't know anything about the meeting. Let's focus on what the president was aware of. Nothing. He was not aware of the meeting. It must have been a very important. A, must have been a very unimportant meeting because I never even heard about it. I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it until you start scouring through the stuff. It was, it was literally just a wasted 20 minutes, which was a shame. No one told you a word, nothing. I nobody didn't talk about this in the plane a little bit, but nobody... No, nobody okay. told me. I didn't know that. You know, it's a very unimportant... It sounded like a very unimportant meeting. The president has stated very clearly that he was not aware of the meeting and did not attend the meeting. This is not a situation where the president was involved in this meeting, was not aware of the meeting, did not attend this meeting. When did the president learned that that meeting had taken place? Uh, I believe in the last couple of days, is my understanding. He didn't know about this meeting until a few days ago? Yes, that's correct. Mm. Yeah, he only found out a few days before. He was not aware of the meeting. He was not involved. It sounded unimportant. It was such a nothing. Okay, but keeping him honest, if, if it was such a nothing, why did everyone from the president on down start lying about it the moment it became known? Remember, first the meeting was billed as being primarily about American adoption of Russian children. That was a lie. Then came more false statements about who was actually responsible for that bogus statement. I wasn't involved in the statement drafting at all, uh, nor was the president. I'm assuming that was between Mr. Uh, Donald Trump Jr., between Don Jr. and his lawyer. So that was July 11th of last year. No presidential involvement at all. By early August, no involvement became some involvement. The statement that Don Jr. issued is true. There's no inaccuracy in the statement. The president weighed in as any father would based on the limited information that he had. 
Well, seven months later, Jay Sekulow was forced to admit in a letter to the special counsel that President Trump had, in fact, dictated what he characterized as a short but accurate statement. Not just weighed in, as any dad might, but dictated it, accurate or not. Now, the consensus is not. In any event, it didn't stop his colleague, Rudy Giuliani, just last month from offering up this heap and helping of word salad. I think it's a case. I mean, I obviously asked Jay about this. Uh, I think he was uninformed at the time, just like I was uh, when I came into the case. He, he was just in the case. Uh, this is a point that maybe wasn't clarified in terms of recollection and his understanding of it. And what Jay did was he, he, he immediately uh, corrected it. Uh, and even if it had been on an oath, you would call that recanting. And, and it's Jay, not the president. So that's the wisdom of not having a president testify. Uh, it's one thing to do it with a lawyer. Yeah. It's another thing to do it with, 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 with your client. So got it? Makes sense now? The president's defenders can't seem to keep their story straight about the bogus story the president concocted about the meeting that they were misleading about after concealing for a year. That's one side of the equation. On the other side, the president's turncoat attorney, who might or might not be telling the truth about his serially less than honest former client, that's where we are tonight. And so is this. Two years ago to the day, candidate Donald Trump, just a few weeks after the Trump Tower meeting, he either did or did not know in advance about, stood up and said this to the country he's now accused of colluding with. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. As we said, the president left town without answering questions about this or anything else, which does not mean there was no news at the White House today, just the opposite. Seeing as Abby Phillip joins us now, has the White House any official response to this news about the Trump Tower meeting? They have not. The White House has not offered anything in the way of clarification about many of the comments that you just played there made from the podium by the press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And the president, as you just mentioned, left town without making any statements at all, leaving this as simply his word against his former lawyers. Uh, but the president tried this morning in a tweet uh, to, to preempt questions from reporters by saying, denying the story, saying that he did not know anything about this meeting with uh, Don, Don Jr and those Russians, uh, but he does not want clearly to answer any questions from reporters about it at all, and that that is not really how this works. The White House won't submit to any sort of inquiries at all from uh, White House reporters about what they make of this new reporting and how that squares with all of those past statements denying any knowledge whatsoever from the president uh, about that meeting, Anderson. Do we have any idea what the mood of the president is right now amidst all this? Well, he is clearly very angry. A White House source told us this week that he has been stewing for days about all of this reporting, watching the coverage on television. And he's angry not just with his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, but also with reporters who continue to ask him about this at all these opportunities. They tried to change the subject this morning uh, at a pretty hastily put together press conference in the Rose Garden. Uh, the press reporters kept feet away from the president, and the president just turned and walked out of the room after. But those questions kept coming, and President Trump is clearly pretty annoyed about it. Uh, the tweets that we have seen from President Trump uh, this morning reflect pretty accurately where he is. He thinks these questions are a waste of his time, and he doesn't want to talk about it. He'd rather talk about anything else. And, Evan, do I have my math right? Are we on the day three now with no answers from the White House about lies exposed by, exposed by the Cohen tape? That's exactly right. Three days of the president not saying anything about it, being asked about it, the White House also being asked about it, referring questions to the president's outside lawyers, and also, I should note, Anderson, not having any White House press briefings to answer any questions at all. Sarah Sanders' last brief for about 15 minutes on Monday. The White House has only had three press briefings all month. Uh, this is the White House retreating from inquiries about all of these controversies swirling around this president. Uh, they don't want to talk about it, and they're not giving reporters opportunities to do it. When they are pressed on it, they are lashing out at reporters, as we've seen this week. Uh, the White House uh, is really leaving this uh, out in the open, allowing these questions to continue to swirl around this president. Yeah.